Lemon Grove. Grove is part of the name, so it should be capital G. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we're one. Yeah. I, yeah. One might be. Uh, yeah, please. How please repeat them. How is since, since after the Civil War, everybody's came on federalism, federal government, older is now saying, ah, since the Civil War decided to have any more succession and all that is older. How are you going to get them to go along with California is what's going to be if it's not total succession, at least very much, doing something very close to it? Um, you know, that's, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, and there's a lot of research in the book looking at that. Uh, the answer is that, A, we're not going for secession. We're going for subnational sovereignty, where the military and the dollar stay intact. That's totally different than the Civil War or anything like that. We had the uh, Virginia formed a separate army, and then they formed underneath that, and then they started making Confederate backed dollars. So the mechanisms that allow secession in America to happen aren't even available under this plan at all. Secondly, this plan is much less radical when you consider that subnational sovereign governments, there's 25 of them around the earth today. They're all stable, they're all democracies, and they all have good relations with the country. So we're proposing something much less radical than secession. By the way, uh, those attempts that have been stated in the last couple of days, I totally believe are related to the election and people just upset. Yeah. And I want to point out that I've been selling this book, as you know, for six months, and I've been working on it for six months. So this has absolutely nothing to do with it. The way that we would get America to go for this is that, and this is key when you're talking about Hawaii and California, Hawaii and California didn't join America the way that 48 other states joined. So typically a state, uh, it's a territory, people move into the area, they make roads, the population builds up, then they petition to become a state, go through the steps and join them. Hawaii and California were known foreign governments that had relations with the American federal government, and then America went in and military conquered them and took them over. That's not how 48 other states were showing. So the way that just these two joined is opposite from the way that 48 other states joined. And so if America was to actually go into this, it cannot both say that we have a strong union because 48 states follow this format and say that the union is strong, including these other two states who did not follow that format. If you take it a step further, besides violating a law that allows all the states to become part of the union, America violated the basic English common law of which all American laws are written. So all American law comes from the English common law. The thing that allowed all English-speaking people to colonize the world was a law called Terra Nullis, which basically said if you move in and nobody's done anything with the development land, if you develop it, it's yours. This was a way that people were able to stake out a claim. So native people, I'm not agreeing with this, didn't build roads and didn't build orchards, so therefore they didn't develop the land. If a farmer comes in and does it, then he does. When America took over Hawaii and California, which had farms and roads and a stable government, they violated the principle of Terra Nullis, which allows all of America to be settled, and they violated the specific American law that allows the states to join the union. This has never been looked at. What happens when this is presented to America and said, now defend yourself? By the way, British foreign legal scholars have already recognized this case and have written in major British newspapers that California has a case to do this. And the foreign ambassador of Russia specifically came to California and said that this case is so strong that Russia would immediately take it to the UN if California would pursue it. So there is something here. It's not talked about at all. What happens when it is? Yes. So uh, the other thing is that when we present all these things to the U.S., now justify the case, now explain it. The U.S. will have trouble justifying this and say it's never had to do this. But also I'm arguing in the book that America has spent about $3 trillion on the war on terror. We're 10 years into it. They have no idea when the war on terror is going to be over or how to end it or how to win it. 
it might go on another 20 years. I saw General Douglas Luke talk about that. So we have $3 trillion in here to make the world safer. And guess what? Exactly. Benghazi is proof of that. We're 10 years into this, and we've wasted $3 trillion and we're nowhere safer. I said $3 trillion right after the 9-11? Uh, yeah, roughly, if you yeah. add it all up together. Yeah. You know, but that was uh, 11 years ago. Yeah. I walked past yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you say three trillion. I'm saying I've heard the number around three, maybe four trillion dollars if you add up Afghanistan well, and Iraq and Yemen. Yeah. 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 And uh, Iraq? I, I don't have the specific breakdowns for individual countries, but if you have... In other words, what, what do you consider going into the dollar system? <coughs> Okay. Okay. All of it. Well, that's Everything that's doing the question is first, actually. Has it made America safer? Well, in this oh, country, okay. it's safe, but we haven't had another attack uh, in 11 years. So. Uh, in, right. But, excuse me, they can easily leave early. Oh, okay. All right. Questions afterwards, then. Okay. Um, 